Our world is constantly bombarded by a shower of particles coming from outer space. Those particles originate from distant supernovas and black holes. Those are known as cosmic rays. You can't really see them, but they are all around us. So let's just hope that cosmic rays will not hit my laptop and just destroy the CPU while I'm still making this video. <laughs> Supercomputers like Frontier and Fugaku and quantum computers like those built by IBM and Google, they battle cosmic rays every single day. And that's a huge problem. One good example is SCI Blue Mountain supercomputer, which was installed at Los Almas National Lab. When it was first installed, it could not run more than one hour without crashing, and one crash after another was happening because of relentless cosmic rays. The solution back then was to cover the supercomputer with metal panels, and with that extra protection it was able to run up to six hours. But when you think how long it takes to run a simulation, that's obviously not sufficient. But you know what? Even worse happened to the Big Mac supercomputer. It was a huge one built of 1100 Apple Power Mac J5 computers. That's actually how it's got its name Big Mac. <laughs> For this one, the failures were happening so often, they were not even able to boot the entire system until it would crash. The problem was that the Big Mac did not have the error correcting code for memory, and there were so many cosmic particles hitting and changing the state in memory that one of 1100 computers would always crash. Eventually, they had to replace this one with another supercomputer called System X, which had ECC memory protection. Error correction code is a safety mechanism which is implemented in software. The idea is to copy some of the information into the redundant bits. And then, when an error occurs, we can use these redundant bits to find the error and fix it. Even though ECC memory is so widely used today, the problem with cosmic rays is getting worse and worse. Let's take as an example Cray XT5 system. This was long ago, but still very interesting. It had 360 terabytes of main memory, all protected by ECC. For this one, they conducted an experiment. They were logging every incorrect bit flip which occurred in memory. They found out that it's about 350 errors happening per minute. So bad it is. Here is the main concern. As transistors are getting smaller and smaller, and we are fitting more of them per area, the rate of faults will grow exponentially. Because these new tiny 3 nanometer, 2 nanometer transistors operate even at lower voltage, which makes it even easier for a particle to switch transistor state. The main concern is that we will get so many faults that we can't run a simulation long enough to get to a meaningful result. And this particularly concerns AI, as training large models often takes weeks or many months. And now we already have exascale supercomputers. You know, last year they've built Frontier supercomputer at Oak Ridge National Lab. In total, Frontier built of 9,400 CPUs, 37,000 GPUs, and almost 40 petabytes of memory. It's exactly how a large scale cosmic ray detector may look like. <laughs> Now you must be wondering how those modern supercomputers like Frontier deal with random bit flips. Basically, while running simulations, they will be creating so-called checkpoints, basically recording the global state of the supercomputer. In case the simulation crashes, they restart it from the last valid checkpoint. But when we are getting beyond exascale, it takes so much time to save these checkpoints that just another crash can happen in between. And that's the challenge. That's why many research groups are working on speeding up the writing of those checkpoints to secure exascale computing. Cosmic rays is not only the problem for supercomputers, but for quantum computers as well. And for quantum computers, it's even more catastrophic, because they experience such errors roughly once every 10 seconds. Just imagine, computing task which takes hours to complete being disrupted every 10 seconds. 
That's a disaster. Now, the researchers from the University of Chicago and Ergo National Lab found a new solution to this problem, and they were able to reduce the rate of errors from one every 10 seconds to less than one per month. That's what, six orders of magnitude less. That's an amazing result. Let's see how it works. In quantum computers, the key components, so qubits, are linked together in entanglement. Quantum computers are just like highly sensitive people. They are very vulnerable to the disruption from surrounding. As of today, in quantum computers, error occurs once every 1000 operations. And that's pretty often. And exactly correcting these errors is the key to scaling quantum computers to more qubits and to more practical applications. The biggest problem is that the cosmic ray hitting a quantum computer most likely will not destroy one quantum bit, but rather all qubits at once. It may destroy the entanglement and just erase all the information which was encoded in the quantum processor. And in this paper, the researchers address particularly this problem with a new and elegant approach. The solution is redundancy, but now it's done differently compared to the traditional computer chips. Here, we cannot use traditional error correction code like we do it for conventional computers, because quantum computers are based on qubits, which is basically a mixture of one and zero states. We cannot read a state of qubit without its quantum information, so entanglement being lost. That's why we cannot copy the information into the redundant qubits. For quantum computers, the problem is addressed differently. The idea is to encode qubit information into a collection of physical qubits rather than a single one. And the more qubits we use, the better we can correct the error afterwards. In this work, the researchers split a quantum computer into several data chips, and each chip will be processing multiple superconducting qubits. After the cosmic ray strike a chip, which is at the bottom left, the unsealed chip and another not impacted data chip are used to restore the lost data. Now, the whole simulation does not have to start again if some of the chips are damaged by the cosmic rays. And with that, they've proven to suppress the rate of errors to less than one per month. Wow! This work was focusing on superconducting qubits. But you know, there are other types of qubits, like my favorite one is semiconductor spin qubit. Still, they are facing the same problem. Just like every electronic chip, every transistor on Earth, it's being striked by cosmic rays. That's the reason why the chips which we send to space are radiation hardened. But here, down on Earth, they are not. This would be an overkill. So we are using redundancy and software to cope with the problem. Still, it's hard to imagine when we continue to scale this way, from exascale to zetascale systems, or in case of quantum computers, to thousand qubits and then to hundred thousands of qubits. The amount of intelligence on our planet will just explode. <laughs> But at the same time, the damage from cosmic rays will scale as well. So deep space can basically stop us from achieving AGI. Hopefully, we can stop it first. Thanks for watching. If you want to support my channel, my work, the link to the Patreon is below. And don't miss NVIDIA AI GTC conference, which will take place next week. This is gonna be fun. You can register for free with the link below. And now I need to go to work. See you in the next video.